that the uh, creation story as told in Genesis, which was written by Moses up in Zoom in collaboration with the Levite priest, was a story that Moses learned while being raised as an Egyptian, believing himself to be an Egyptian. Let's get into that a little bit later. Okay. okay. So, there is something called the Council of Nine, okay, in basic fundamental structure of Egyptian creation, mythology, pantheon structure, monotheism, you name it, okay. At the head of the Council of Nine, was this guy named Anu. Anybody here not familiar with that name? Everybody knows that name, okay? <laughs> this is where we get the word annual for the, you know, the orbit of the sun. He is the head honcho, the sun god, the arch. He created first Uh, what basically was the earth, sky, or earth, air, water, and fire, the four elements, right? They had specific names, in fact. Here's a uh, translation of the Egyptian Book of the Dead I've been reading recently. Let me give you the names of, um, there is Tmu, T-M-U, Shu, S-H-U, Tefnut, T-E-F-N-U-T, Seb, S-E-B. I don't know who was who in, in this, but I know that it was basically the four elements. Then over here, they birthed two sets a brother-sister twins known as Set, Isis, Nut, or sometimes Nephthys, and Osiris. I'm sure everybody's familiar with those guys, right? Okay. Are you familiar with the fact that if you take the initials of those four names, you get this word? Okay. Are you familiar with the fact that if you uh, take a phonetic alliteration, you can also spell that this way? Okay. Anybody not familiar with that word? <laughs> okay. This is the origin of that word, and basically the entirety of what we're going to go into in terms of going from the Egyptian to the Sumerian, Babylonian, pre-biblical, and the Judeo-Christian construct is an entire structure of an Isis-Osiris mystery cult based on black and white, dark and light, good and bad, etc. Because basically, besides the king and the priest, the two pillars are both symbolic, energetic, and literal of a construct that we all have in ourselves, which is called the polarization or the polarity, splitting ourselves and polarizing. Because again, if we are biocrystalline virtual reality projecting units, if we have a literal polarizing filter and we project everything out in polarity, we are controllable, you know? It's the simple Machiavellian principle, you know? And you think a lot of people would realize that, but you look around every single day, and they're just doing it over and over and over every day continually using polarity and the external projection of an enemy construct through that split in the two pillars, okay? So, and also, if we take these two letters, we have a binary code, on, off, on, off, on, off, the male-female aspect, okay? Whether you have alternating current here or a binary code as the basis of all these 
electrical digital units that we walk around, it's the same thing. It's a splitting of the mind. Okay. It's also the number 10, if you noticed. In Roman numerals. So, no, not Roman, not Roman, that's Arabic. Uh, but anyways, um, let's go to the story. What is the basis, what is the fundamental building block of the Isis Osiris mystery cult? Okay. Well, basically, Isis and Osiris were the twins of light. And Set and Nut, or Set and Nephthys, were the twins of darkness, right? Or day and night, black and white. So, Set was jealous of Osiris, the evil twin, or the doppelganger, the projection uh, outside of ourselves of our own, you know, evil twin or, you know, opposite or what have you. Isis was off shopping in Paris or something. <laughs> and Set <coughs> murdered Osiris. Anybody not familiar with that story? So most of you have heard this? Okay, I mean the basics. Do you know that then after he killed him, Set dismembered Osiris's body and spread it out along the Nile River. Okay. If you're familiar with Egyptian civilization, there are seven principal locations along the Nile River, the, the temples, that basically were put in place as the seven positions along the spine of the human body. And there was initiatory processes that you went through, moving through the chakras, during your process of going through the Egyptian mystery schools to integrate yourself, okay? So the, four, the 15 dismembered parts of Osiris's body were spread along the Nile, along the spine, okay? Now if you take the human body and you disarticulate it, an articulation is a major joint, okay? A wrist, an elbow, or a shoulder, a hip, a knee, or an ankle. So if you divide the three parts, you have three on each arm, three on each leg. Your foot, your um, calf, shin, and your thigh, okay? So there's 12 of the 15 parts. The 13th is the waist, the 14th is the neck, okay? Disarticulating, but where's the 15th, okay? Hmm? Okay. This is a male. So what is the 15th part? The male phallus. Okay. Well, the story goes that Isis returned from her shopping trip and um, found out that this had occurred and went looking for all his parts. Found 14 of the 15. Okay. Anybody want to guess which part she didn't find? Okay. Okay, so she put him back together and created an artificial phallus and then impregnated herself and became pregnant and birthed the prodigal son named Horus. Okay, this is where the Immaculate Conception story comes from. This is where the, uh, you know, prodigal son who will rise again, all of that, you know. Horus. So when Horus rises, he will rise on the horizon, okay? And when the light is killed, the sun is killed by the dark evil twin, the sun is set, okay? I got that from Jordan. <laughs> no, really? Jordan Maxwell, okay? So, there's that annual, I mean, daily arch of the sun. Rising sun, extinguishment, extinguishment of the light. So, the male principle, the masculine principle has been dismembered, okay? 
metaphorically in a myth or a creation story, energetically as part of the primary control structure of the human population. Okay? Because what is the masculine principle? It is electrical in, na uh, in nature. It is directive in force. Being held by the magnetic principle of the feminine. Okay? You have the basic fundamental building block of electromagnetism, creating the magnetic field and directing energy or current through the masculine, right? Now, if the masculine has been dismembered at the root chakra, what's going to happen? Whether, and it doesn't matter male or female body, doesn't matter what equipment you have in the body you're currently occupying. I'm talking about the energetic of any bo human body. Out okay. Balance. Pardon? Well, not per se out of balance, but inability to ground fully into your root chakra, which means you, who you really are, are not in your body. You cannot come fully into your body if you don't ground in the root chakra. You are not grounded. Okay? We're not, all not grounded. So what this is saying with the pillars the polarization is basically the masculine principle has been castrated, split, schism, and polarized in order to control us energetically, electrically, you name it. And you're going to go aha, aha all day long today and tomorrow as I start filling all of this in. But the basic is what happens when you can't ground an electrical current? you will short-circuit it, right? Okay, so let's say we cannot ground into our root chakra, so the root base of our electrical masculine principle rises up to the second chakra and short-circuits, okay? It's seeking ground, okay? Where is it seeking ground? It's projecting externally, okay? We are basically energetic electrical capacitors. Everybody know what a capacitor is? It holds energy. You build up a capacitance, and then you can use that for motive or directive force. Okay? So if the human body has been purposefully, holographically, as a holographic sphere of the entire planet and a hologram, a part of the whole, reflecting the larger whole of the human body, has been castrated, ungrounded, split, and polarized. And it is an electrical battery that its capacitance cannot ground, it short circuits, and it's continually building charge and discharging. Okay. So when we later get into the basis of law and money, what happens when you go to court? You are given a charge. What happens when you balance it out? You discharge <coughs> it, okay? So the whole money system, and I'm just touching on this, we're going to get into it more tomorrow, is basically an externalized projection of everything I've gone through so far of using the... This is how the Matrix movie, when Morpheus sh sh holds up the battery and says this is how they create reality or use us to create reality, this is the basis of how it works, okay? And the entire law and money system has been built around this basic principle. So the Egyptian creation story, the Isis Osiris <laughs> mystery cult, and everything else that I'm about to go into is basically how it's constructed. So, so you have basically these two four-pointed squares and you can build your two pillars. So you have the four elements and you have dark and light. The building blocks of substance and matter when the spirit comes up and picks up the substance and creates life or holds and retains life by splitting, by uh, cutting, you know, splitting the male, masculine, 
castrating it, bringing that up to the short circuiting, controlling the chakra system, how we express and create through our physical manifestation in these bodies, and polarizing the mind and everything else by dark and light, good and bad, good and evil, etc., etc. And then inducing symbolically all the basic constructs that we're going to get into more so that we continually project it out and recreate it instantaneously, constantly, like on and off, on and off, on and off, you know, ones and zeros through digital electrical currents that we're constantly looking at inducing and all the symbols that are going in at a huge rate now through these little units that we're so fond of these days. Have you heard uh, when the tree towers fell that these were symbolic of... Uh... Don't even ask that. We're going to get into that. <laughs> we are going to go there, but we're not ready to go there. Do you think that looks like the Twin Towers? Yeah. Okay. So, so what is that? That is embedded in everybody's consciousness now, you know, for the last 10 years. And what is it? It's your basic magicianship. Now you see it, now you don't. Okay, it's there and then it's gone. Okay. So, so we basically have Anu and his control of the twin towers of the king and the priest. controlling the law and the land, using the human battery system to split, polarize, castrate, unground. And what does that do when the male principle is not grounded? It creates impotence and rage. Okay? What characterizes our entire civilization, male impotence and male rage, expressed through dominance, violence, and suppression of the feminine principle instead of being in balance. Anybody have an objection to that description of our current civilization? Okay. So, the priests control the temples. They establish the law. One must adhere to the law or be expelled from the protection of the temple, the civilization be excommunicated. Okay? The king controls the land. All real wealth comes from the land or the labor of the people. If the people are bound and bonded to the law of the priest, that function of those five principles, history, law, money, human energy, and resources. The king controls the resources, the priest controls the law, the people bind themselves to the law. That's called religion. To bind again comes from the root ligir, which is to bind in Latin. Okay. What it really means is we bond or bind ourselves to the law of the priest so that they can entrain and control and use our creator capacity to do what I said, using human labor, value-added resources, manufacturing, etc., to create our prison and keep us enslaved and in, in, in prison. Religion. Okay. So we also have heard the term jurisdiction and the word contract. Jurisdiction, the word juris means law, but it also means oath. When you take an oath to a jurisdiction by contract, which is what we do continually all the time in our current system, we bond ourselves to a set of jurisdictional laws, rules, codes, statutes, which are essentially and literally the law of the priest. Again, okay, I'm going to walk you through time and space, 5,000 years, political history and the flow of it until we have a perfect structure of the control of the king and the priest and the people continually agreeing by contract because if you are sovereign and the creator of your own reality, 
individually and collectively, you have the capacity to bind yourself by contract, okay? And if you look through the history of law, and even modern history, nothing really actually happens until you consent, okay? And if you withdraw your consent and you hold on that position of uh, rescission of consent, you know, revocation of power of attorney and things like that, um, they may hurt you, they may throw you in jail, but if you hold absolutely to that position, they ultimately cannot control you, okay? So collectively, we have bonded ourselves by religious constructs, by contract to jurisdictional structures of the law of the priest and the temple and all of that so that the king can own all the land and the people are bonded and bound to the law of the priest. That make sense? Yes. Okay. This was developed thousands of years ago. So the Aparu, the Ibaru, I mean not the Ibaru, the Aparu, the Hebaru, took the wisdom and the knowledge of the Ari, the wise men, the Druidic colleges and all the rest of it, and turned it upside down. They were the Aparu and they became the Hyksos kings between the 18th and the 13th dynasties. And they began formulating and structuring and constructing their system of law and the land control through the king and the priests that we have today, okay? Basically over the last 4,000 years. Culminating in a period known as the 13th dynasty, which was around 1500 to 1350 BC. Finishing in the reign of one known as Akhenaten. Everybody knows his name, I'm sure. Okay. Can I ask you a question? You may. Okay, I'm a little confused right here. Okay. The, the Hebrews, which became the Hebrews, which controlled the land by way of the king and the priest, uh, I was under the impression that there was a major difference between the Palestinian uh, originators of, of or occupants, which could have been the Hebrews that had disseminated into the land. But the 